So I've been resin 3D printing for a few weeks now and I learned a lot of lessons right off the bat that I wanted to share with you guys. So in this video, we're gonna cover five things that beginners or people thinking about getting into resin 3D printing need to know before you begin. So let's get started. All right, so number one, the bottom of these tanks are very fragile. I learned right, I mean, the first time that I switched resins out and changed colors, I was cleaning the tank out and grabbed just a paper towel to wipe the bottom and scratch the heck out of the bottom of it. I, I just, it went from this dead clear, you know, piece of plastic to this scratched up thing. And I went, oh, I think that was a bad idea. And so far now I've learned, you know, a little bit more about how these things operate and what you're supposed to do with them. So I just want to mention, you know, use a non-abrasive rag to wipe the bottom. You, you can use paper towels on the tank and everything, but when you're, you know, drying off the bottom of your, of your tank, this is called the FEP, this piece of plastic. I don't know what FEP stands for offhand, uh, but when you're cleaning, drying that off or doing anything to clean um, the actual piece of plastic, the clear piece of plastic on the bottom of the, the vat or the tank, use non-abrasive materials like microfiber. Um, you can get like a pack of, you know, like disposable ones or, or non-abrasive types of, of cloths. That's what I use on the bottom of that. You can use paper towels on everything else, but just be careful with that. And also watch where you're just kind of sticking this thing. Don't, you know, I would, this one is for the Saturn and it actually has little feet, um, but the Mars and, and other ones, I'm pretty sure, other brands, uh, if you stick it on something, you could dent or scratch or even, you know, rip the, the FEP. So you, you kind of want to get in the habit of putting these things on their sides when you put them down. Uh, and, and don't grab it with your fingers. Um, just be very careful with the FEP because it is very fragile. Uh, I'm gonna have to replace mine because I've already actually screwed up another one of, of them. So uh, a, an upcoming video is gonna be replacing the FEP in your tank. Uh, but before you begin, just know that it is very fragile, delicate, uh, handle it with care. All right, so number two, going off of what I just said, I need to replace the bottom of my tanker, you know, replace the FEP sheet. And uh, it, it made me realize there are a few components that are consumable on the printer itself. Now, of course, your resin, you know, rags, alcohol that you use to, to clean off prints and clean everything up. You know, there's a lot of consumable items generally with uh, resin 3D printing. However, there are some components to your printer that are uh, consumable. And so the bottom of the tank, the FEP sheet, that is going to be a consumable. I actually re recommend when you buy your machine or, you know, right after you've bought it, I would recommend getting some extra FEP sheets because these things, again, are delicate. You're going to have to replace them eventually just due to normal wear and tear, no matter how careful you are they eventually get kind of mucked up a little bit. Um, and if you ever, you know, do, you know, put puncture it somehow or dent it or do something, it can affect your prints. So you're gonna have to replace these things eventually. The other thing that was a little bit more of a, a shock to me, and I guess I, I didn't really think about it, but you are gonna have to eventually replace your LCD screen in the printer. And that's a little bit more involved than the FEP sheets. Um, you're going to have to kind of take apart your printer a little bit and, you know, replace that screen. So that's something, you know, they are consumable after a while. One thing I have found out is the mono screen printers, um, they're, they're going to last a little bit longer because you're not, you know, just burning um, pixels, I guess. I don't fully understand everything about the technology, but uh, the monos will last a little bit longer than the other, the older screens, let's say. So, you know, your Saturn, I don't know a whole lot about a bunch of different brands, but um, your Saturn is going to have the mono, your Mars 2 Pro. I think the Mars 2 does as well. Not sure about previous models before that, but um, so just know that you will have to eventually do that. It's not super expensive, but you know, you are going to have to kind of know how to do that or figure out, be able be able to do that, I should say. Um, you know, taking apart your printer a little bit and, and kind of fiddling with it. So I just wanted to mention that it's something to know before you get into this stuff. Uh, and again, like I said, I, I would recommend they, they sell packs of these FEPs. Pick those up so you have them on hand if you ever do need to replace one. And just know down the road, you will have to replace the LCD screen. So a uh, couple things to think about before you get going. All right, so number three, uh, and this is kind of going to be a no-brainer, I think, to most people, but uh, make sure that if you ever remove your vat off the printer, 
that the build plate is not dripping wet with resin, so it will just drip onto your LCD screen. Uh, one time, I think what happened was I got a failed print and I had to get the, the failed print off of the FEP, so I removed the tank and I was kind of working on it. <laughs> I didn't think about the, the build plate was just soaking wet with resin dripping and it's just dripping onto my LCD screen. Now, it's not the worst thing. It's not like it's gonna ruin your machine or anything like that, but I'll tell you what, the less times you have to clean up the LCD screen itself, uh, the better off you're gonna be because it's a little bit more delicate. You know, you can use alcohol and different things on most of the components. You don't really wanna be using harsh chemicals on an LCD screen though. So it's a little bit more of a, a complicated cleanup, let's say. So hopefully this, uh, me sharing this with you, sharing my blender will uh, help you avoid getting resin on your LCD screen and you won't have to clean it up. All right, so number four, I just wanted to cover, talk about water washable resins. That's a type of 3D printing resin that uh, some companies are selling. And that's what I bought when I first started. It just seemed like, oh, I'll just, you know, wash it with water, it'll be great. <laughs> and what I found is it's a lot harder to wash it with just water. It, you're gonna have to scrub the heck out of it. I found that it really never got the prints totally clean. And so I just started using alcohol instead. Um, and you can use alcohol on, on water washable resin as well. It just works so much faster and it just works so much better. And so I've just switched to doing that. The other thing about it is you're gonna need to use alcohol to clean everything else. Um, so it's not like you can totally get away from using alcohol to, to, to you know, do 3D printing. So yes, you're gonna have to buy a lot more of the alcohol to, to clean prints and do that stuff. You're gonna have to you know, have like buckets basically. But, you know, so I just wanted to mention that. Um, it's not gonna be, um, a lot easier or anything like that. And it's not gonna be as wonderful as they kind of make it sound. The other part of this is water washable resins are exactly the same product, same thing, and same safety issues as standard photopolymer resins or you know 3D printing resins. Um, you, you know, they're still toxic. <laughs> they, you, you, you're still gonna not wanna breathe the fumes. You know, don't get it on your hands. And another thing about it is it almost makes it sound like, oh, I'll just take my print off the, the 3D printer and go wash it in my sink and let the resin just go down the drain. You cannot do that. You don't wanna be dumping any of these resins down your faucet. Um, you wanna, the best way to dispose of it is actually just, uh, I have one of those 3D, or not 3D, uh, UV lights. And so I just cure the resin and then throw it away. Um, that way, you know, it's not just like open still or anything like that. It's been cured, you just toss it in the trash and you're good to go. Um, don't, you know, wash any parts off or, or anything. Don't let any of this resin get into the sewer system. It's not good for it. So just wanted to kind of cover that. There's, it's kind of an in-depth thing, but I, you know, I did, had no clue and I just started buying a bunch of water washable resins when I first started. Uh, one thing I want to say is I got good results with them, but um, you know, they're, they're just, the cleaning part is just not as awesome as it makes it sound. So just wanted to let you guys know before you get going. All right, so number five, this is just kind of a heads up for you guys. If you're thinking about getting into this stuff, you need to understand it's messy, okay? You're, you know, you're, we're dealing with liquid resins. You're, you gotta dump them out if you wanna switch, you know, from one resin to another in your vat. There's gonna be, you're gonna go through lots of alcohol, cleaning up everything. Um, you know, there's smells in the air, all these things. And so, you know, for me, I'm in an industrial shop. My dad's a machinist. I do resin casting already. We already have solvents, smells and things going on. Adding one more to our shop is not gonna do anything. So, uh, and we do heat it, so we don't have to worry about that. You do have to watch out. You, and this, I think this stuff is even more sensitive than a lot of casting resins. You really want to, most of the manufacturers really recommend you be above 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So just kind of keep these things in mind I, I just you know after I've gotten into this and understand now you know I've seen how this all works what I have to do how much cleanup you have uh, I just and the smell and everything I just couldn't imagine doing this in my house I, I my wife there's no way she would allow this so if that's the situation that you might be in you might really I, I would really recommend I think you go with a filament style printer um, there and I'm, I'm going to do a video down the road kind of comparing the two i did filament style printing before and now i'm doing resin 3d printing so i you know but bare minimum i just want to make sure that you do some research before you spend money and, and get all set up and get going with this stuff make sure you know what you're getting into 
I'll be doing some more videos on, you know, the cleaning process, how to clean the tank and, and what's all kind of going on. Try to also think about, you know, how much, how much materials am I going through, I, I, which I need to know anyway. Um, but, you know, you go through a ton of paper towels, gloves, <laughs> you know, all this stuff, alcohol. So I just wanted to make sure that, you know, before you get into this, make sure you do your, your research and know what you're getting into. So anyway, guys, I hope these tips were helpful for you. If they were, definitely hit that like button down below. It helps out with the channel and it tells YouTube, hey, this video was likable. We should maybe share it with other people. So really appreciate all that support, guys. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. You don't want to miss out on new videos coming soon. We got a lot of videos on resin 3D printing coming up as well as some, some resin projects as well as some just resin casting tips. You don't wanna miss any of this stuff, so make sure you're subscribed and the notification bell is turned on. And don't forget, we do live streams every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Pacific time, and we're gonna be adding a new one Saturday at noon. We're gonna basically do the resin you know, casting part on Wednesdays, and then we'll get on the turning or, or work on the blanks that we made from that previous Wednesday uh, on Saturday. So a uh, couple different times, you don't wanna miss out on anything. So again, make sure you're subscribed. So until next time guys, thanks for watching this video and happy casting.